I'm here with Alexander Mercurius, editor-in-chief of the Duran. Alexander, let's talk about what's going on in Bolivia. Let me read you an RT article with uh, ex-Ecuador leader Correa and what he says about what's happened in Bolivia. You can also give us some context as to what's going on in case our viewers haven't heard. Um, in the last couple of days, there's been uh, what looks like to be a coup against uh, Morales after the elections. But let's start off with what ex-Ecuador leader Correa says about Bolivia's Morales, who was forced out in a coup. And I'll begin from this RT article, Alexander. Former leader of Ecuador, Rafael Correa, said the resignation of Bolivian President Evo Morales was the result of a coup d'etat and that events could have ended in worst violence if the socialist leader had not resigned. Quote, of course there was a coup d'etat, Correa told R RT Spanish in an exclusive interview on Monday, explaining that such an insubordination of the country's armed forces cannot exist in a constitutional state of law or democracy. If Eva Morales did not resign, there would have been a bloodbath because there was no public order, he said. Alexander. I basically agree with Carrera. I mean, as far as I can see, this was a coup. And I should add, uh, uh, perhaps coup, um, uh, the type of coup that, that we come to know as a color revolution. These color revolutions are carefully organized and prepared affairs. They are never spontaneous revolutions of people going on strike or people going uh, protesting. Um, these, on the contrary, um, have the look of being extremely carefully prepared in advance. And all the usual signs of this are there. Firstly, there is an election. It's, it, it, the color revolutions usually happen around elections. The election result is disputed by the uh, opposition candidate who loses. Um, people are called out onto the streets, organized by NGOs. And there's been quite a lot of information that money has been pouring in to NGOs based in Bolivia for some time. And that these NGOs have been very active in organizing opposition to the uh, um, incumbent president, in this case, Evo Morales. Um, as these um, protests continue and gain momentum, there's growing pressure on the security forces to uh, switch sides. Undoubtedly, in many cases, bribes are offered and accepted. Eventually, the security forces crack and we saw this firstly with uh, police forces in various parts of the country and then in Caracas, uh, sorry, in La Paz itself, that's the main city of Bolivia. And then eventually there is the call from the army for the president to step down. And that, in effect, is what has happened. This follows the script of the color revolution incredibly closely. And I can't help but think given how closely it follows that script, that this hasn't been prepared very carefully in advance. I mean, there are even other minor uh, points, like the fact that um, during the color revolution protests, this outside supposedly impartial mediator, in this case, it's the Organization of American States, in, let us say, for example, Ukraine, in 2014 or in 2004, when there was another color revolution, or an earlier color revolution in Ukraine, it was the European Union. The, the so-called impartial mediator comes along and starts issuing reports which basically favor the opposition. And that's exactly what we've seen again in Bolivia, where the Organization of American States cast doubt on the elections without actually saying that they had any evidence that the elections had in fact been rigged. They said that the result was statistically improbable, whatever that means. So it follows the script too closely for me not to be a color revolution. And that's what we see. Okay, um, Correa also said that the OAS was uh, an is an instrument of U.S. domination. So it seems that Korea 
ex Ecuador leader yeah. Correa agrees with you there. Yeah. Uh, Morales resigns. Yeah. Do you think that was the right move? Yes, I think it was the inevitable move. And now I'm going to say something else, which is, of course, that Morales himself has, uh, to some extent, brought about the situation because he decided to stand for president in this election. He's already been president for 14 years of Bolivia. He has, by and large, in my opinion, run a successful government. I mean, Bolivia has remained economically stable. He's uh, um, used his, uh, uh, the, sort of the natural wealth of, of Bolivia to, some, to, to redistribute it to some extent to his supporters who are from the poor and indigenous section of the Bolivian population. But he has not done that to the extent of destabilizing Bolivia's economy. So he's been a relatively, he's been a successful president, but he was, uh, he, he took the wrong decision to stand again. He, the, the, the Bolivian constitution limited presidents to two terms. He called a referendum to change the constitution so that he could stand again. He wasn't successful. He nonetheless went ahead and stood again. And that was unpopular, even with many people who would have supported him. So he, he has to be seen to some extent as bringing about this uh, uh, this crisis. But having said that, Morales, in my opinion, almost certainly did win this election. I mean, the 10% margin that uh, was announced seems to me to be an, a valid margin, given what a successful president he has been, and his very real support within Bolivia itself. So I think he's won this election. He, I think he won the election. I think his removal was definitely wrong and unconstitutional and is a coup. And in a deeply polarized country, which is what Bolivia is, that's going to exacerbate the political tensions that are already there. Um, I suspect that he's going to be arrested. I suspect that he's going to be charged with various uh, offences because there is no way that the coup leaders can allow Morales to continue in active politics. He's far too dangerous a force to permit that to happen. So they will try to find a way to neutralise him. That will mean some kind of criminal case being brought against him that will antagonize Morales' supporters even more, and that will deepen the extent of po political polarization in Bolivia, which is already, like everywhere else in Latin America, extremely high. Where does this fit into what's happening right now in Latin America, Alexander? Got yeah. Bolivia. You've got yeah. Peru. Okay, um, yeah. we saw what happened in yeah. Ecuador, and Korea, yeah. it, it, you know, is out of Ecuador now. Yes. Um, yes. Argentina and what's going on there. Of course, you have Chile, which is undergoing protests almost on a daily basis. Yes. Where does Bolivia fit in with with all this instability that we're seeing in Latin America? Yes. Is, is yes. this by I mean, accident or or not? No. It's not by accident. It's a sign of the extreme degree of political polarization across Latin America, which has existed, by the way, for as long as I can remember. There is always a division in every Latin American society or state between a, a, a group of very, very rich, very, very powerful people at the very top who are closely integrated in the international economy, who basically accept the whole globalization project. And that at the same time, they also have a lot of support from middle class people in across Latin America who are deeply sus sus suspicious of any attempt to carry out redistribution policies. So you have that sort of very conservative block on the one hand. And on the other hand, you have a sort of uh, uh, very left wing uh, um, tradition, which extends to radical socialism. And there is no real bridge, there is no real centre 
between these two. So always perennially in Latin America, you get crises because whichever side wins in any particular country, um, they will act as if their victory um, is a total victory in which they will do whatever they consider to be, um, you know, their agenda. They will follow their agenda without compromise. And at the same time, they will not be accepted. That will not be accepted by the losers. So it has never proved possible in Latin America for Latin American governments to really stabilize themselves and carry through a real economic breakthrough, like of the sort that, for example, we've seen in Asia. It's never happened. Now, having said that, I, I do want to make it very clear that overall, the people who are more to blame for this kind of polarization are the oligarchic and the oligarchic groups in these societies, which have never really wanted to share power with uh, uh, um, uh, um, other sections of the population who, as I say, they consider undeserving. And it is the willingness of these oligarchical groups to resort to unconstitutional and extra legal methods, in other words, coups, and to embark on ferocious repression, which accounts for this policy, this, this, this history, this tradition of political polarization, which makes it impossible for Latin America to progress, uh, uh, um, to progress success economically and socially successfully. Now, I, I'm going to comment on something else, which I know our, our viewers are going to mention, which is or, or are looking for, which is the role of the United States. The United States has always played a big role in Latin America. I'm quite sure that the United States has been involved at some level in the events in Bolivia that we have just seen. However, I do think that people who point the finger at the United States tend to ignore the extent to which Latin America's, problem, Latin America's problems have internal causes. The United States would not have the influence over Latin America that it does if Latin American societies had not been so divided and so dysfunctional. Okay, Alexander, so I didn't mention Brazil and Venezuela when I was giving the rundown of countries in Latin America that are undergoing some sort of uh, trouble, but um, Venezuela, you know, I think is an interesting one to discuss compared to Bolivia. Do you think that this coup in Bolivia had its roots in the Bolton Abrams, Elliot Abrams policy yeah. that they formed for Latin America? And do you think that, you know, Bolton and Abrams policies vis-a-vis -vis Latin America that they tried to implement in Venezuela that failed with Maduro and Guaido and all that stuff? Yes carried over to Bolivia? And if so, why did Bolivia succeed? Yeah. And why did Venezuela fail? Yes, well, that's a very good question, actually, because to start to go back to the beginning of our of our program, I said that this follows very far too closely the color revolution script to be anything else. Now, that should suggest a high degree of pre-planning. And I'm pretty sure that the pre-planning, most of it, a lot of it, happened in Washington, and I'm pretty sure that it happened um, under B John Bolton's aegis. What I suspect happened was that at the beginning of this year, at the time when the United States, under, while John Bolton was in charge of the National Security Council, was preparing to act against the Maduro government in Venezuela, they were also targeting the Morales government in Bolivia. At that time, Morales was the last left-wing leader, apart from Maduro, who was left. So it's understandable that they would go after him. Now, of course, we've had a re an election in Argentina, much more important country, by the way, which has gone to the left. But we, we will, we'll put that to one side for the moment. Why has this succeeded in Bolivia when it failed in Venezuela? 
I think the answer for the answer to that, you have to go back some years to what happened in Venezuela, when in 2004, there was, or was it 2002, there was an attempted coup against the former Venezuelan socialist leader, Hugo Chavez. Now, Chavez himself was a military, was a military man. He was able to defeat the coup with the support of the population of, uh, uh, of Caracas, the capital city. And what he then did was that he purged the army and the police of all the sort of people who had supported the coup, and he put his own loyalists in. Those people are still there, and they have provided a phalanx of support, a kind of guard of support, supporting Chavez's successor, his anointed successor, Nicolas Maduro. On top of everything else, it's widely believed, and I'm sure it's true, that Maduro has the assistance of a very sophisticated Cuban intelligence operation within Venezuela. The Cubans are heavily involved in Venezuela, and undoubtedly they've got their own people there, and they are extremely well organized in intelligence and um, in surveillance activities. Now, Morales ran a much softer socialist style of government than Chavez and Maduro have in Venezuela. And he never carried out that kind of wholesale purge of people he didn't trust in the police and the military. So the result was that when uh, uh, the, this, this color revolution happened in Bolivia, he couldn't rely on the police and the military, whereas Maduro can in Venezuela. That's the critical difference. All right, Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, click on that subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. Visit us on SoundCloud and iTunes to get an audio copy of this video and donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star. Your donation really helps out, helps us out a lot. And also go to BitChute. We post all our videos on BitChute and Duran Video, our own platform, which we're testing. We post our videos there as well. And of course, Alexander, go to Telegram, subscribe to us there, and go to the Duran shop. Pick up some magic mugs and magic t-shirts. Magic mugs like these two beautiful magic mugs that I'm holding here with the with these wonderful emblems of the Russian Federation and the Alpha Force and which sustain us so well and these absolutely great shirts like this polo shirt I'm wearing also t-shirts long sleeve short sleeve v-neck shirts hoodies stickers hats all wonderfully made all our shirts are 100% cotton all of them are incredibly comfortable to wear incredibly stylish to wear and uh, you will find all these great things on our shop. Um, Alex will show you how to get them. So help yourself, help the Duran, and Alex will tell you how to do it. Just go to the DuranShop.com. Link is in the description box down below. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.